do stuff uh, that will help help you uh, rank. So there's sometimes I think a lot of misconceptions out there. So I just want to clear the road on all that. And I'll teach you guys some cool tricks and stuff too uh, a little bit uh, later on in the, the call. So hopefully you get some uh, value out of it. And as soon as my screen goes to the next one, there we go. And once again, these calls are every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, uh, which if you don't know what time that is by you, that's right now. Uh, we'll host a live tr training and or Q&A call for you know, our members. And if you're registered uh, for the series or you're here now, uh, you'll get a reminder each week so you don't for forget. But if you can't make it or something that uh, pops up, we'll, we'll always have the recordings up in the members area within a day of any of the calls under the training tab on the left side navigation bar. You'll click on the tr training tab, then you'll click on the Wednesday calls and you'll see them listed right there with the most recent ones at the very top. Um, so this one obviously you won't see for um, like a half day to like a day because it's live now and we need a half day or so to um, render the video and throw it up online. But by tomorrow, you'll see that um, up there uh, in case you missed this. And as always, you'll have a chance to win $100 today. Um, and we'll tell you how, but uh, I'm sure most of you know, because do we again do this each week, but make sure you first join this free Facebook group. Go to getwebfire.com forward slash FB group. Uh, it'll forward you to a Facebook page, you'll just join that. And if you're not a member of that yet, again, it's free. Uh, Sharon will, will approve of you, usually within like a couple minutes or so, and then we'll tell you how to uh, win $100 today towards the end of this call. So I have a quick question for you guys. Um, and the question is very simple, and you can type it in the chat box. It's, do you have an e email list, even if it's a small one? Type in a one if, if it's Yes, and also if you type in a one, if you could also say what niche it's, it's in, like if it's in, in internet marketing or if it's in weight loss or sports or whatever it might, might be, type, type in a one followed by the niche. If you don't have an email list at all and have no intention of ha having one, type, type in a two or type in a three um, if you don't have one now, but you plan on building one. And if you type in three, also say what you what niche you plan on building that list in. So I'll, I'll give you guys maybe 30 seconds to write that out. It will help us out with some stuff in the future and uh, possibly for some training and stuff that we're uh, working on for, for you. So if you could just answer that and give you again a few more seconds and then we'll move on to do the training. All right, lots and lots of answers, so that's always good right there. Looks like there's a good mix mix of you. So now we can move on to our training uh, for this week on New Age SEO. So despite lots of changes over, over the years um, on you know what you have to do to get ranked, a lot has really stayed the same too. There, there's a handful of new uh, changes and methods and stuff, but a lot has stayed the same too. Uh, so we're going to basically talk about all that right here. But it's crucial to also be up to date on the latest methods and stuff to get, get ranked as again, some methods that worked years ago can actually hurt your chances of ranking now. And at the end of the day, Google and the other search engines, again, want to give their searchers exactly what they're searching for. So always keep that in mind. And at Web Fire and such, you know, we've always had essentially a policy of, you know, let's try to do um, everything kind of white hat or everything as legit as possible where, you know, you try to give the searchers what they want, but at the same time, increase your own chances of ranking. It, it tends to work much, much better in the long run versus trying to take advantage of, um, you know, like a short-term hack or a short-term tweak or anything uh, like uh, that. If you keep that in mind, you can really stand the test of time with your ranking methods. So here's an overview of what we'll do today. First, we'll talk about some old tricks that you should really avoid now. Then we'll talk about some old methods that still work great. Then we'll talk about the new HS SEO methods. And then uh, we'll switch to our Q&A, and then we'll do the cash giveaway at the very end, as well as give you guys a 
reminder of some free resources and, and stuff that you can use. So moving on to old tricks to, to avoid now. In the past, one could just get a lot of backlinks, even if they weren't all that re relevant to almost any page. Keyword spam those, those links and achieve top rankings. This, this was true years and years and years ago. Um, and unfortunately, many people still try that today. And there's lots of services out there that sell just that. Um, and there's a lot of people that buy just that. But it oftentimes does more harm than good. Google no longer looks at just the quantity of your backlinks, but much more so the quality of your backlinks. One highly relevant backlink will be beat out a thousand crappy backlinks any day. And a great method that you can do to, to get more relevant backlinks, one of many that we'll, we'll actually talk about in just a bit, is you can use several of the lead tools inside of Webfire uh, to help you uh, find places that you can leave posts comments and some kind kind of interaction and leave links back to, to to your site or draw guys back to where you want them to basically go um, or even just mentioning uh, your site or the site's name can also help even without a link too because that's a little trick that a lot of people don't know is that google doesn't just look um, at links they also look to see if your site is basically mentioned outside of a link too um, so anytime that you leave a relevant post or comment or anything like that on a relevant site, that can help you as long as you keep it, again, relevant and done in a non spammy way. If you just do random links at random places with you know, no, no actual context to it, you'll get burned very, very quickly. Keyword spamming is another trick that worked uh, many, many years, years ago, but almost always doesn't work any longer. Uh, this is where you simply reuse the same key keyword over and over again on your, your site where the content simply doesn't read well. Google is smarter than that, especially now. Um, so, you know, you really uh, should be really, really careful uh, when it comes to, to, to that right there. Um, in fact, I say, you know, ideally, um, you know, you want it to flow naturally and read well. If, you know, every sentence or every other line has a keyword that you're trying to rank for, it looks weird, it doesn't flow right, people know what you're trying to basically do, and therefore Google knows that now. In the past, when they didn't have nearly as many sites to rank, and they weren't nearly as smart you know, with their algorithms, that was a method that did indeed work, but again, it gives the users a poor experience, because uh, again, it doesn't read well or flow well or anything like that, so they're less likely uh, to keep you ranked there. But there's several old me methods that still work great. Uh, one of those, which is I think one of the most important ones, is targeting relevant keywords in your title tag. Um, so this is like oftentimes if you have a blog, the keywords in your blog post title are automatically turned into part you know, of your title tag. Um, or if you do a search on Google, uh, the blue links that show up for all those sites, those are basically the title tags. Um, and if you don't know what any of that is, no worries at all because again you can use the website analysis tool inside a web fire see what basically your title tags are for you know any page of yours and you can easily change them uh, within web fire as well right there but the trick though is to target keywords that don't have a ton of competition usually you want less than three sites on page one of google containing the exact match keyword in their title. So this means that if your keyword is, let's say, weight loss tips for men, okay? If you do a search on Google for weight loss tips for men, just like uh, that, and you see that there's, you know, let's say, you know, uh, only one or two sites or less, there might be none, uh, that have that exact phrase in their t title tag on page one, that means you'll have a very easy chance of ranking for that key keyword the vast majority of the time, uh, which is a huge opportunity for, for you. The only exception to the above, uh, and by, by above I mean like, you know, if there's less than three com competitors on page, page one, or less than three have an exact match keyword phrase in their title, is if it's an extremely competitive and oftentimes short keyword like diet, or weight loss by itself. Not weight loss tips for, for men, but just weight loss by itself, or just diet but by itself in a very competitive niche. 
because in these cases, which is very rare, Google looks at more factors and is smart enough to know other relevant search terms that you probably want instead. So, so they don't just look at how many sites are truly trying to target that word. They look at a bunch of other things that makes it you know, harder to uh, rank with just the keyword you know, in the title. But 98 or so per percent of the time, this rule still applies though. So don't overthink it. And I'll show you an example of this uh, right now. I'll actually just I'll pause the screen for a second here. And I'll show a Google search here in a second. I'm just going to switch switch over screens here. And right here, you see a Google search that that I did. And in this case, let's say the niche uh, that we, we were in was um, you know raised g garden beds, and you you thought that hey maybe the keyword how to build a raised garden bed, you know, is good. Um, so what you'd want to do, you'd want to search that like, like we did right here. And then you want to search through only the organic listing. So if there's any pay, paid ads, then you'll know it's a paid ad because it will say ad or sponsored like right, right there. Um, whereas here, you know, there's, there's none. So skip any of the ads, go down to, to, to the organic re results. And you want to see how many of those on page one contain that exact phrase. Um, you know, in their t title tag, which again, in this case, is how to build a raised garden bed. Um, and in this case, we see one right here. We see a second one right here. Um, and you know, there's probably there might be another one down here. There's there's some close ones down down there as as well. Um, so in this case, it looks like there's at least two exact ma matches, um, and then. There's a couple that are fairly close, but in this case, we only care about the exact matches. And what you'll see is, guess what ranks at the very top? The exact matches here. So the, for the, the top two, the two that rank are exact match key keywords right here. So that's, that basically tells us that if we target that phrase in our title tag, you know, we'll have a decent shot at page one. There's some comp competition there, sure, um, but we have a shot at it. Whereas if we find that like three or four or more of them have that exact phrase in their title, uh, um, that means that we'll have a tougher time getting on page one. If there's like one or zero that have that phrase in their title, that means that in almost all the cases, you'll have a super easy chance of ranking, you know, on, on page, page one. Um, and that's like a very awesome thing to, to keep in mind is that, you know, if you target phrases that have like, you know, little or no com competition on page one, um, you won't necessarily always get like a ton of traffic, especially if it's not um, like a major key keyword. But if you slowly add up a bunch of articles or um, a bunch of blog posts or even videos over time, you know, the if, if you do like a blog post, that let's say let's say it, it only gets, you know, 100 clicks to your site a month. So not a ton. But that's you know 1,200 clicks a year, and it's something that may have only taken you a half hour to basically do. And if you do one of those blog posts a week and try try to mimic the same results of a you know a hundred hits a month, that adds up um, over time. That goes from you know 100 clicks clicks a month to a thousand clicks clicks a month to 10,000 clicks clicks a month, and you know again moves on up all by going after these simple key keywords that don't really have a ton of competition. So I just want to keep that in mind and how that's done. Um, even if you're like trying to look for re re reviews and stuff like that, like let's say you're trying to write, um, you know, affiliate re reviews or anything like that. Uh, a trick that you you can do is you can do um, a search like get, get response re review. Let's say you want to write a review of get risk response, which is an autoresponder. Let's say you're an affiliate for. You could type in that, and let's see, and again, we want to skip the ads. We see there's a bunch of ads there. And we see in this case, there's a bunch of sites that contain the exact phrase in their title. Um, looks like almost all of them do. Um, so in this case, we say, whoa, this is very hard and very competitive to get, get uh, rank there. So you might want to skip that phrase uh, right there. Maybe instead of that phrase, You'd want to do get, get response.com 
re review and see what uh, pops up there. And in this case, look, we see a lot less. Um, so right here we see that in this case, we'd have a much easier time ranking uh, for that keyword right there. Now it might get less hits or essentially traffic, but you'll have a much easier time of ranking for, for that. You can also do stuff like um, get response versus a Weber re review and see, uh, you know, see what that is. And right here we see um, there's, in this case, there's, looks like there's three that have the exact match that start with get res response first. So that's kind of, that's at the line where, you know, you want ideally less than three. So that's kind of, eh, you know, it wouldn't be insanely hard, but again, it's not super, super easy uh, to, to, to rank for, but you still can get that done. Um, and another trick that you can do with this is, of course, you can use the main key keyword tool inside of Webfire to automatically help you identify places that have less uh, than three title tag matches on page one, because we, we automatically actually check that. And it's one of the factors that you know we look at before identifying a good keyword in the color green. So again, just keep that in mind right there. I'm just going to pause the screen as we go back to the PowerPoint now. All right. And let's see. There we go. Um, now, you should also still use relevant key keywords throughout you know, your content at least once, once or twice. Because um, I know in the past I said, you know, don't try to keep keyword spam, you know, your blog posts or your pages or anything like that. But you want to have it read naturally. So if you're trying to target a term like weight loss tips for men, you know, make sure that you at least use that once or twice throughout the article itself. If you, there's a lot of guys that try to rank for stuff that they never have even once on their site, which is, you know, it, it, it's, it's kind of like saying, hey, I want to rank for Chinese rest, restaurant, um, even though I'm an Italian restaurant. I mean, it probably wouldn't make any sense to really rank you for, for that, that, even though there might be, you know, lots of traffic there, um, unless they know that you're basically relevant to that phrase. Um, in fact, I, I, we actually had um, a, a client once that wanted to rank for some like weight loss tips for, for, for men or some term like that, but her entire site was on weight loss tips for women. But she wanted to also rank for men because she, she, she thought that she could basically double her market and all that, but it's like, okay, but you know, a guy doesn't want to search for weight loss tips for men and end up on a site on how to lose weight as a woman, okay? It wouldn't work. Yes, there's a lot of you know additional traffic and stuff there, but Google will never rank you in a million years because you have nothing to do with that, and there's no relevant keywords um, on that site. Um, you also want to have the key keywords in headlines or sub -head headlines as well, as that can can help. And you also want to have relevant keywords in what's called image alt takes, uh, which can help as well, especially for e-commerce stores where you're selling stuff that people want to look at first. And you know, an image alt tag is basically any graphic that you have on your site. Like if you sell uh, mugs, if you have a picture of a certain mug, you know, a lot of people just have a graphic that's called one 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 five two nine, you know, two six seven dot JPEG, which tells Google nothing. Uh, whereas if if your mug is like a Mother's Day mug. Um, or Mother's Day fun, funny mug, call it that. Um, you know, when you upload the actual picture, you can label any image you want as that. And we actually have inside of Webfire, again, we have a tool to help you change the image alt tags of any image that you have on your site because Google not only can help rank that web page better, they sometimes even rank the actual images on your site at the very top, especially if it's for like products that a person might buy. Like if you're looking for a mug or a shirt or a necklace or anything like, like that, oftentimes if you do a Google search, you'll see a bunch of images at, at the very top um, because Google basically knows, hey, if you're looking for a certain kind of a coffee mug or shirt, you probably want to see it first. Um, and if you use these proper image alt takes, uh, you can be ranked to have it show up right there. And again, we make this super easy to change all that within Webfire, as many of you know. Um, 
you also can have the keyword phrase be in either the domain name itself or the URL. So um, you, this, this does not mean every keyword you want to rank for, you need a separate do domain for. It just means at least try to have it within the, the URL. So if you have a blog, like let's say it's, you know, blog.com is your blog, okay? Instead of having your blog post be like blog.com forward slash, you know, post 1115, you know, have it be blog.com forward slash, you know, weight loss tips for men. Um, where, you know, you have, and there's, and, and, and um, we actually have a plugin inside of Webfire that can actually help you do um, just that um, on, on your uh, site. So that's kind of important right there. But with that too, um, if you don't have a site yet um, and you have like a main topic on it or, or, or like a main niche, if you have, um, if you can find an available do domain name that you can register that has a keyword or the keyword phrase in the domain itself, you can have a very good chance of ranking, um, especially if you have the content or the keyword throughout the content on your site too. In fact, there's a myth that I've seen a lot of guys say that this method of an exact match do domain used to work years ago, but does not work now. That's not true. Um, in fact, um, the reason why a lot of people think that and why a lot of the SEO experts say, say that is because years ago, you could have an exact match do domain with no relevant you know, content at all, and you get ranked on page one just because you had an exact match do domain. Now you can't do that. But if you have that combined with relevant content and the keywords in the content itself, you can achieve some very easy rankings as well. So again, I'm not saying start from scratch, start with a new do domain, but at the very least, try to have it somewhere in the URL uh, itself. And again, we have the tools to help with that there. Now, moving on to some new age SEO. So besides just trying to target your keywords and such well, there's a lot of new factors that Google and the other search engines look at. Um, a lot of these we started to actually see years and years and years ago. Um, before a lot of others, you know, basically talked about any of these, but we've seen a steady increase in the importance of these over the years. So as the years go on, they seem to look at these more and more and more and more, um, compared to even though they were somewhat of a factor years ago, they seem to, to, to be more and more important now. Uh, but again, always re remember that at the end of the day, Google just wants to make sure that what searchers are searching for shows up in their listings. So again, don't try to overthink that. But here are a few new age S SEO methods and tricks that you can do to get some pretty easy and immediate results. So one I call the catchy title tags. So instead of just trying to target a relevant key keyword phrase in your title tag, which is necessary, you should also make sure that they're basically catchy and get people to click through. If a title tag or the title of your blog post or your article too is not only keyword friendly but also catchy more people will click through which will tell google to increase your rankings more and more or keep the high rankings that you might have if you start out ranked number five you know on page one but you get a higher pr proportion of clicks there than other number five rankings do google will move you up Likewise, if you rank number one on page one, but barely get any clicks, you'll likely be moved down in the rankings. Um, this is especially true on new sites. They sometimes um, basically test out sites. So sometimes you might get like really good rank rankings that you lose over time. Oftentimes it's because you don't have relevant content or you don't have the clicks that, 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 that they're essentially looking for. So you might have your normal SEO done uh, perfectly well, but they, they might say, hey, when people click through here, they click back immediately. So clearly they, you know, your site does not have what they're looking for. The entire part of the, you know, of the title does not need to be SEO friendly, just some of it. For instance, here's an SEO friendly title tag for the keyword phrase puppy potty training. You could have just, you know, you could basically have the title be only puppy potty training. That would be a very SEO friend friendly title tag, but it's not necessarily too appealing. Here's a slightly better SEO friendly title tag that also targets more additional keywords besides just puppy potty tra training. For instance, your 
title take could be puppy potty trick training tricks to train your dog to pee outside now that actually uh you know contains a couple different kind of uh phrases so it increases your chances of ranking for at least some, something it has again puppy potty tra training as as one it also has train your dog to pee outside it also has tricks to train your dog um and a, a you know bunch of different kind of uh phrases rolled into one so you increase the likelihood that you'll rank for at least one or, or more of those right there but you can make it even better by not only increasing the amount of keyword phrases that you have there but having it be extra catchy as well so here's an even better example of one that's not only seo friendly targets additional keywords but is also very catchy at the same time you, you could have it be puppy potty tra training dash five minute trick to train your dog to pee outside now the five minute trick part holds no seo value at all because the likelihood of someone searching for five minute trick is almost nothing i mean maybe there's some guy that does a search for like five minute trick um, but chances are probably not um, or at least not many at all but you can bet that it'll likely get a lot more clicks from those that see it and here's why you know, if you see 10 sites ranked on page one, okay, and they all say something like puppy potty tra training, you know, you have to pick one first to click through. And are, are you likely to click on a random one that just says puppy potty tra training? Or are you likely to click on one that says puppy potty tra training dash five minute trick to train your dog to pee outside? That's when you're like, whoa, a five minute trick. I have a dog that's peeing all over. I want to learn how to, you know, Train, train this dog and to train the dog in five minutes sounds super appealing because a lot of those other articles might talk about how to take weeks or even months to, 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 to actually train. So you'll get a lot more clicks because you not only have an SEO friendly title, but it's appealing and catchy at the same time. So you likely get a lot more clicks, which will actually help increase your rankings even more over time. So the next then when it comes to, to SEO, as far as new, new HS SEO, is engagement and length of time on site. And this has become more and more important. So one newer thing in the past few years, and again, becoming more important, is how long someone stays on your site and what they do. If someone clicks on your site from Google and immediately goes back to another site, that tells Google that they didn't find what they wanted. So your site isn't relevant which in return can eventually decrease your rankings. If someone clicks on your site and stays on it for a decent amount of time, that tells Google that they most likely found what they're looking for. And therefore, they should re reward you with basically allowing you to keep that ranking or increasing your ranking even more. So you can increase your chances of this by having highly relevant co co content on top of, you know, again, having a catchy title, make sure that the content is relevant. You can also have internal links to relevant art, articles or videos. So if someone is lands on, on your, your site, you not only can have the relevant um, content or the solution to the problem that they're lo lo looking for, the answer to their question right there, but you can also have internal links to other relevant articles or videos. Just try to do anything to keep them to stay a little longer uh, on your site. You can also have users engage with your sites through basically comments and such, which can also show Google that you're a popular site that people are enjoying. So if you use comments at all, you know, it helps to have at least, you know, a handful of, uh, you know, basically comments and such on there. So Google then says, hey, this is a site that people are actually getting some value out of and actually posting on. Um, so it, again, it can help. Now, here's a nifty little trick that works, especially for uh, um, keywords that aren't searched quite as much. So if you do this right here, a lot of guys oftentimes will manually check to see if they're ranked. Um, and then they'll do a, a key, key keyword search, they'll see their site ranked, they click on it and they immediately click back. <laughs> and for a large search phrase, that won't really matter a ton because there there will be a lot of other people that search. But if you're only expected to, to get, you know, let's say, you know, 25 hits a month or so, like let's say it's a local phrase that you don't expect to get a ton. 
Um, if you click on a site and immediately click back, that sometimes can influence what Google thinks viewers of your site think. So anytime you do a search for, for your own site and click on it, try to stay on it for at least a little bit. And likewise, I've seen this uh, trick work in the reverse way, and that's anytime you do a search, if you stay on your, your, your site, you can actually increase the chances that Google will say that they like uh, your, your site and let you keep the rankings or move it on up. Uh, so it's not saying like, don't, don't spend all day trying to search your, your word over and over and over again and stay on it, because again, they can track IPs and stuff like that. But for the smaller phrases where you might not get a ton of traffic, especially for like local fr phrases, uh, don't shoot yourself in, in the foot by clicking on your site and immediately clicking back um, on that. So that's a, a cool uh, trick that we found as well uh, right there. So that's kind of neat. Another thing that you can do, which has been more and more important, especially in the last year or two, um, is especially here with schemas as well as site sitemaps. So there's a few things that you can do to help Google know more about your site and what to show their searchers. Sitemaps is one. And a sitemap is like a table of contents that you provide to Google so they can more easily see all your pages and what is what. Uh, we have a sitemap maker inside a web fire uh, that you can use. It makes it super easy. And again, it's kind of just, it basically says where all your pages are and what's what. Um, and, you know, imagine it like if, you know, if you are, let's say in college, okay, and you have to study for a class and you have a book and it's a college textbook, imagine how annoying it would be if you opened it and there wasn't a table of contents. And uh, let's say, you know, it was like a chemistry book and you had to find a certain page on a certain kind of molecule, okay? How annoying would, would, would it be to have to flip through hundreds of pages to find the information that you need? Well, you'd probably think basically two things. One, you think that it's a very unprofessional unpro text, textbook, and two, you might be more likely to ditch that because you're like, hey, if they don't even have a table of contents, why should I even bother uh, with this right here? Well, Google kind of views things in a sim similar way, and that's that, hey, if you have a sitemap, it makes you look a little more professional, and it helps them find what's what to at the same time. But uh, another big thing, which is you know even bigger now, especially for some uh, kinds, kinds of businesses, is what we call a schema. Now, a schema is a bit of code that tells Google even more about you, like what your hours are, you know, your local business, more information on your products, um, you know, and it doesn't matter if you're a local business or you're just a blog or whatever. There's sitemaps for all of those. Um, and they're looking at these more and more and more. And it's one of the easiest things that you can do to get ranked better now. Um, and I'll show you an example of what that is. So just gonna switch over here. So here is an example of a schema. So this is a client of ours, it's a tennis shop. And a schema, you, you can actually see a couple examples. So one is you see not only just a link shows up to, to their site, you see a bunch of links basically that show up under that. That can be done through the use of a schema. You can also see on the right side, uh, this big area that uh, has basically reviews, it has their hours, it has their phone, um, it has you know the picture, it, you, you can have the social media, um, all that right there, that's done through the use of a schema as well. So obviously, um, if you show up like this, you have much more greater chance of getting people to click through here rather than someplace else. Um, and we have a schema maker inside a web fire right here, which makes it super easy to actually make these. Um, you can pick, uh, you know, what kind of schema it is, like if it's a local business one, and it shows you kind of like a preview of what that would look like. And you just fill, fill in the blank right here. Uh, and once you fill that, that in, it gives you a little line of code that you paste on, on your site. And then you can even test it. And, um, you know, we, we, we even help add it to um, either a standard site or a WordPress site for you. So again, we make it super easy to do just that uh, for you right here. And again, it works on uh, more than just local sites. And, and it can also be a great thing to sell as a service too. Uh, but you know, if you have a product page, you can have stuff show up like this. Like you, you can have 
stars show up on your re reviews. You you can have your stocks sh show up if you you know sell like you know like an ecom stuff. Um, so or even if you just like a blog or like a video, you have stuff show up like this. You you know, you know with like a picture of you and when when your posts were, which again stand out way more. And again, all you have to do is fill in the simple blanks right here, which are all very very easy and create the code right there and paste it on the site, which again, if you don't know how, how to paste it on a site or anything like that, just click add right here and it'll add that in um, and walk you through that very, very easily and help do that for you uh, right there. So that's how the schema part is done right there. So I'm just gonna switch back. All right. So the next part is social media's role. Um, so there's been a correlation between a site's social media presence and their rankings, um, where basically, you know, if you have a presence, you're more likely to have better rankings on Google too. Um, this is due to a variety of re reasons, but the basic logic is that if you have a social media presence and people are talking, sharing, or they're commenting on your, your site, your site most likely contains value and is worth ranking. In addition, a presence on sites like Facebook or Twitter can gain you more relevant backlinks both from there and from other sites that might pick up your blog posts or your content to share to their audiences. Tools like our social fire poster tool inside of web fire can help even automate your social media marketing to help with this as well. And when creating content to distribute on your blog sites and social media remember to continue making the titles super catchy so they have uh more of a chance to be clicked on because the exact same concept works you know on face facebook and twitter as it does on a normal blog now here's also another simple trick to take advantage of more traffic on social media if you're controversial or you talk on topics that um, people have a strong or big opinion on, uh, you're more likely to get a lot of interaction. Um, whereas if you're very, very boring and you talk based on topics that, you know, doesn't really get people riled up or involved or it's not something that gets guys to leave like, you, you, you know, a comment, it's a bit more hard to stand out and make it look like you have user engagement. It might be a great article, um, but it might not get the user engagement um, you know, that makes it look like, hey, this is worth basically talking about. This makes it look like you're a big site. For instance, um, you know, like there's, uh, there's a lot of articles now um, that might basically talk about some, 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 something that Trump did. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's a po political art article or if it's a marketing one, they go back to them because they, they know that, you know, half the people um, will absolutely hate basically reference and half might love it um, and people have a strong opinion on it and it gets some it almost forces them to leave a comment there um, and forces like a lot of people to try to get engaged and they feel like they have to voice their opinion um, it's the same thing like uh, you, you know like a less po political example would be in sports like um, you know if you somehow had a post relevant to a sports team uh, naturally you get a lot of people riled up about that because some either love the sports team or they hate it um, or if you talk about like let's say uh, there's oftentimes like a lot of um, ads and posts you'll see about how like um, you know the economy might 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 be crashing or there's like you know huge huge changes or anything like, like, like that it stands out it's catchy it gets guys to click and it's controversial in that people feel like they have to give their own input uh, so anything like that can give you a greater chance of being more viral um, and if you if you also look for like trending topics and try to like make those relevant to what you're talking about um, like if you're let's say a marketer you can have you know a relevant topic like um, you know Bitcoin or Trump or real estate markets or anything like that, if you tie it back into your lesson, um, you know, it's trying to really hit to like a larger market. Um, so like that's that's why oftentimes you'll see guys that say, you know, um, like they'll they'll have a mark marketing uh, 
lesson on like, you know, lessons learned from, you know, investing in Bitcoin or, you know, mark marketing lessons from Trump or that he's he's used or stuff like that. It gets guys to, you know, not only look at the marketing side, but pay attention to the, you know, big, big topic there too, or, you know, the mass media topic or you also see see guys like they they might have a post like um uh like using internet mark marketing as an example here it, it might be uh five mark marketing lessons learned from harry potter or game game of thrones or something like that it stands out more it takes another big topic that a lot of pe people like um and you know again gets more attention and people more likely to basically interact at the same time so you can try, try to think through how to do that for your own marketing as well how, how to take advantage of trending topics and stuff uh, for you know your, your your own stuff and next we'll talk about video rankings because um, more and more uh, you know videos getting bigger and bigger and bigger in a lot of ways and ranking a video on YouTube follows some similar methods and stuff to ranking sites on Google, but there are some differences. In both cases, you want to have relevant key keywords in your title and your description, so on and so forth. Um, but there are a few big tricks here and there's two in particular. One is you want to encourage viewers to like and or comment or or sub subscribe to your channel as more engagement here means that they'll see your videos more and more and you'll get better rankings at the same time that's a huge factor uh, some sometimes even more so than on a website is how much they engage uh, you know with your video and they'll if, if they like it or they engage at all um, they'll be more likely to see future ones that you have um, and you'll more likely get better rankings at the same time time and simply by asking them to subscribe to your channel or simply by asking them to like it um, like say hey if you've enjoyed this please like this or you know hey if you want to get more videos like this for for, for free click sub subscribe right now just saying it gets guys to take action if you never s s say it don't assume that they will even if they enjoy it by telling them it reminds them that it, it exists and encourages them to do so and take action which can help you out a great deal Another trick that you can do, which I'll show you how to do in a second here, is you can target keywords that your competition uses from popular videos and such. You can, you can use, um, so if you take, like let's say there's a video that ranks for a keyword that you want, okay? You can take the keywords that that video or that com competitor is using, and you can use them in your own keyword tags using the video Firestorm tool inside of Webfire, which helps you do all that. And you can have a greater chance of showing up as a suggested video after someone watches your competitors' videos. And I'll show you how to do that. I, I shared this, I think, uh, uh, one or two, two other times in the past. People loved it. But I know a lot of people um, missed that one. So I'll just share with you how that's done in a second. Just going to pause the screen for a second here. and pull it up right here so um, this case what you'd want to, to do you want to go to U youtube and you want to type in a keyword that you either want to rank for or one um, relevant to your market so let's say you had a course or let's say um, you're like an instructor on golf okay i'm not a big golf fan my, myself i play a lot more tennis but i know golf is a larger sport so that's why i use this as an example so let's say um, you want to rank for a keyword like how to increase your golf swim speed. Okay, I, you basically would type that key, key, keyword phrase in here and then you see a bunch of videos. And there's two things you want to look at. One, you, you, you wanna look at which ones are ranked towards the top and how many views that, that they have and how recent they are. So if there's a ton of views and it's only like a week old, um, that tells you it might be a trending video that you might want to take advantage of or if it has like a ton of views even if it's a little more more old that tells you it might, might get a lot of views and people really really like that so we see here there's a lot of different ones some range from only you know thousands of views to hundreds of thousands of views but we see at the very top here's one uh, that has 1.5 million views right here so what, what we want to do in this case we want to click that and if it has an ad let the ad play if it does does not just uh 
pause. So in this case, there's, there's, there's no ad, so we would just pause that. Then what you want to do is you want to see what keyword phrases they're targeting. So what did they put as their keyword takes? And to do that, you have to go to view source. Now, to do that, depending upon the browser that you're in, is a little bit different. Usually, it's under either edit or view. In this case, I'm in Chrome. And you go to view, then you go down to de developer, then you go to view source. If you don't know how to view source in your browser, if you just go, go to Google and type in how, how to view source on you know, Safari or Internet Explorer or Firefox or whatever, it'll walk you through how. But in this case for Chrome, you go to view, then de developer, then view source. And you'll see a bunch of mumbo jumbo code like this, and you'll be afraid, and you'll be like, oh man, I'm way over my head. I don't know what to, to, to do. No worries at all. Go to edit find and type in, literally type in keyword. Not the keyword you're not not the keyword that you're trying to rank for, literally just keyword, K-E-Y-W-O-R-D. <laughs> and you'll see this pop up, and right next to that you'll see the keyword phrases that they're trying to rank the video for. In this case, you see golf power, golf putt power swim, golf tips power, and a bunch of things like that. And what you wanna do, you wanna copy and paste those down onto like a notepad or anything uh, you, you want like that. And you wanna do this for maybe like, you know, two or three videos tops. And then you might have a list of like, let's say, you know, a dozen or more key keywords. And then you don't want to use all those key keywords, but pick just a handful. Pick, pick like maybe like you know five, five or so, five, 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 five to eight or so. Not not a ton, uh, but pick a few that are a, a, a mix of the keywords that you see that they're trying to basically target, as well as maybe one or two of your own, and then put that as the keyword tag in your own videos. When you submit a video to YouTube through Webfire using video. Firestorm, it will ask you to enter the keyword tags. You just copy and paste that in right there. And what that does is after the video is done, oftentimes you'll see, it will say, um, it will give you a list of suggestions on other videos to watch. So this increases your chances of having your video shows up as a suggested one to, to, to watch after a big one like this. So if there's a big one that gets tons and tons and tons of views, you can basically piggyback off of a lot of that uh, right there. And again, keep in mind, as I said prior, with all the videos that you do, encourage guys to leave comments, encourage guys to subscribe. Like you see this guy right here has 47,000 subscribers. He probably encourages them to sub subscribe to learn even more tips. Because uh, as you build this up, you can build up a lot of viewers um, on all these uh, right here. And you, know, you can build a business off of that right there. So again, keep that in mind. And I'll just go back to this right here. So that's a cool, cool trick right there. And with that, guys, that's uh, that's the end of the New Age SEO tip. So I hope you got some value out of that. But just as a quick re reminder, a couple weeks ago, we gave away some free software. Um, I'll let you watch basically the uh, past um, training we had to be two two weeks ago, so not last week, but the week prior, I think. You can watch that to see exactly how, how it works and whatnot, but basically, uh, you'd go to bizfire.com forward slash survey. It asks you a bunch of questions based upon your business or, you know, uh, uh, basically any business that, that you want to run the, uh, the analysis through, and it will analyze the business for you and give some suggestions based upon what you say, as well as suggest some resources and stuff too. After you do the survey, it brings you to an area where you can sign up for an additional tool for, for free again, you're not charged anything, that will allow you to easily create kind of like mind maps or funnels to plan out you know, your business with the upsells and the front ends and uh, just to see like how much money you could make and you can play around you know with your business mo model those are two very 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 awesome things they're completely free uh, so in case you missed that make sure to check that out um, and make sure to watch the uh, 
training from two weeks ago if you missed that because um, it'll walk you through all those and uh, you can learn how all that's done right there. But again, that's completely free software for you guys to use. So with that, guys, we'll move on to the Q&A. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type those in now. And then right after that, we'll do the cash give giveaway. And for those of you that are new, to partake in the cash giveaway, what you have to do, you have to go to this link right here. And again, this is a free Facebook group. Go to getwebfire.com forward slash FB group. Um, you'll see a post by Sh Sharon um, at the very top that will ask what you thought of to, to today's call. And if you leave any comment within that post, um, and try to leave it within the post, not under the post or anything like that, because it makes it way, way easier to, 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 to actually count. Um, we'll pick a random person that left a comment there in a few minutes, and we'll give them $100 VI. Pay, PayPal on the spot. So you, you can be $100 richer. Um, if you again, leave a comment right there on what, what you thought or any suggestions for future calls or anything uh, like, like that, and we'll pick a random winner uh, in just a few moments time. And with that, Sean, I know you've been uh, probably, probably answering a handful of questions that, that were asked in the chat. If there's any questions that you see or any um, past ones that have uh, popped up a lot, feel free to mention those and we'll try our best to answer them. Hey, Brian, the, the number of question asked by a couple of people, uh, they, they're getting confused between the page title and an article title or a blog post title. Since the, you know, the page title is obviously a specific thing different than what's actually on the content of the page in some cases. Sure. So um, oftentimes, here, I'll, I'll just do a, I'll just pause the screen for a second here. I'll show an example here. So right here, when I had the search for get get response versus a Weber re review, the what's called essentially a title tag. Usually that's what the blue. Um, link or the blue text is. So right here, the title tag that these guys used was a Aweber versus Git Gear Response 2017 dash a detailed com comparison of blah, blah, blah. Um, now, in a lot of cases, especially if you use our SEO pl plugin for like Word WordPress and stuff, um, the title that you have as your blog post title will automatically be turned in to your title tag. So oftentimes, they are the exact same. Um, if you have like a standard web web page, the title tag will be basically just a tag that 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 you that you give. Um, sometimes on a handful of browsers, you know, it it will have the title tag at the very top right here. Um, on Chrome, it does does not. Um, but you can use the website analysis tool inside of Webfire, and it will tell you what your title tag is. And you can go back and easily edit that from within Web fire itself. Um, so you, you want to make sure that basically the title tag um, is relevant, but you also want to make sure that, of course, you know, if you have, you know, like a, a blog post or you have an article or anything like that, to try to have the relevant uh, keywords in that title as well. So hopefully that all makes uh, sense. Uh, Sean, if, if, if you think I explained that confusing or, you know, or anything, feel free to chime in too. Well, I'll let, I'll let anybody ask any questions they have without adding any more and maybe confusing people further. Um, here's another question for you, Brian. So you were talking about you know, finding the, the source keywords, and I think you lost a couple people on, like, once you find the source keywords for a high-ranking video, what, you, what you're going to do with them after you have them. Yeah, so after you have them, what you do, you, 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 you want to paste them down on, like, a notepad, and you might have, like, a dozen or a couple dozen terms or so. Of, of those, pick um, you know just a handful, like maybe five to eight, eight, eight or so. And when you submit a video, it will ask you to basically enter um, your keyword uh, phrase or takes. In fact, I'll show you. I'll just pause it for a second here. Um, I'll show you within Webfire itself. 
Um, go to the video firestorm tool. I'll just bring this up in a second. And then I'll we'll get there first to what, what I'm talking about. And then All right, so on the video fi Firestorm tool, uh, this, this makes it a little easier. When you submit a video through U YouTube itself, you can also do a comparable thing. We just make it a lot easier. Um, so on, on the video maker that we have, you, you can enter the title you know, of your video here. You, you can enter you know, the, the, the des description of it here, and you can enter the keyword tags right here. So of the keywords that you find on those other videos, you want to paste a handful of them right here. And that will increase the likelihood that you'll show up as a recommended video on the back of theirs, which can basically allow, allow you to basically piggyback off of some pop popular uh, videos and stuff, getting a lot of clicks. Uh, so again, uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, right there. Hopefully that clears that up right there. If there's any other questions, Sean, feel free to ask those. Yeah, here's an interesting question. Uh, Marion asked, somebody said that SEO is different for voice search than for regular keyboard search. What do you say? What's that? When so, uh, do, yeah, do you fine. think that, that, that SEO ranking is different for someone who uses voice search than uses a keyboard search. Well, the, if, so if you're the the keyword fr phrases themselves um, probably still apply right there. The only major difference is uh, the, the the only time that you see like a major difference in re results. Well, I should say there's two times. One is if you're on a mobile phone versus like you know a computer the results that you see can be slightly different. Um, and that's another thing to keep in mind too. The more mobile friendly you have your site, the more likely it is to get ranked when someone searches from a mobile de de device. And that's really important too, um, is, uh, you know, especially if you're like a local business, like a restaurant where a lot of people might be trying to search for for you on the go, where they might be on their their phone. Make sure your site has a mobile friend friendly version, um, and that will greatly increase basically the chance of ranking there. Um, the other major time that you'll see essentially difference is the location that you're you're from. So if you're from the UK, the results that you see might not be the same as if, if you're from the US or Australia or New Zealand or wherever you might might uh, be. Um, but in terms of like, if you have like like a voice to text type search, that shouldn't make a major difference. Okay, good. I agree. All right. Um, whoops. Hey, Sharon, can you help Nico? And um, John asked, how would you recommend using press releases like for a new business location, new product in a business, new employee, et cetera? Um, right, you have exactly the right idea. So if you're going to issue press releases and post them, you, your press releases, I mean, you need to wrap it around an event. So anything is an event. You launch a new business, new business line, new product, you have a sale, you have a discount, you're closing something out, you're announcing a free giveaway of a free report like, um, so in, in the U.S. and, you know, our half of the, the planet, um, you know, it's the end of summer, so fall is coming. So if there were things related to seasonality that were going on for us, uh, you could have a press release that, um, you know, here, here's the seven things you should know to get your home ready for fall and winter or whatever, or what you should be doing in your garden or what you should be doing with your HVAC system or something like that. And a good idea if you're going to do that is then to put, um, like three of those tips or two or three of those tips in the press release, depending on how much you have. And then say, you know, if you want the full report, come to our website. Um, so yeah, anything that you wrap around an event, you know, which you're alluding to John is a good thing. Um, so that'll be good. And, um, whoops, hang on. You guys are typing 
faster than we can answer here today. Um, so Andrew asks, what, what do you recommend if, Web, if WebFire tells me my site performance is poor? Um, generally, that means it's not loading quickly. So uh, partly that's going to have to do with, with where you're hosted. You mentioned you have shared hosting, so that could be part of the, the problem, um, depending upon how slow it really is. The other thing would be is if you've got really big, slow-loading images. Um, so uh, depend, you know, without you know, trying to go through it piece by piece, what, what you want to look at is um, you know, what would make it load slow. Number one is, is obviously where it's hosted, but, but um, if you're loading a lot of text, then that loads very quickly. If you're loading images um, or video files that are loaded on your server and it's not fast, then that's going to take a lot longer to load. Um, that's why you see, um, you know, sites that want to load faster can actually be, I mean, to get complicated, you can actually set up whether the images load first or the text load first or, you know, all kinds of different things. If, if you're a programmer, you don't need to worry about getting that complicated. But, but take a look at um, that. And there is a, I don't know where it is offhand, but there's actually a Google tool to test your speed that you could just Google and find out where that is and be able to do that. Yeah, um, and, 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 and with, with that too, it's not like that's nearly as, as important, you know, as, you know, it's like a title tag or anything like that, unless you have like a really slow site. Like if, if, you, if you go to your site and it loads like, like super slow, that's obviously an issue. Um, but you know, if you're identical from like an SEO pers perspective and everything else to like another site, if one site loads a bit faster than you, that could give them a little bit of an edge over you in terms of, um, you know, which one gets ranked higher. Um, but it's, it's not like that's the most important, you know, or, or anything like that, unless you really are really slow. But you, you should be able to, to tell just from loading your, your site, um, is it basically taking a long time to load or is it, decently fast. From from there, obviously it's better to be faster, but don't get too concerned about that if it appears to load decently uh, fast for you. Okay, I think we're doing pretty good. All right, somebody asked, let's see, Shahid, so you can create a YouTube video for each keyword you have grabbed from your competitor's code. Yes, yes, you could. Um, but you, and you don't have to create um, super long or complicated videos um, and you can depending upon the the keyword you could target more than one keyword in a video um, you know or in the video tagging along the way um, and then somebody asked <clears throat> I think it's Frederick the keyboard symbols came out odd odd when translated by go to webinar um, what about dislike signs we sometimes see on YouTube? Is it good, bad, has no influence on SEO? Um, what do we do if we get some? Uh, well, if you're getting a lot, you'd be really curious as to why somebody didn't like your video. But other than that, I wouldn't worry a lot about them. If you're getting views um, and you're getting response, unless somebody's like voting down your video, I wouldn't worry a lot about it. Um, but if people are messing with, um, where you're trying to send people once they get to your video, then you know I would moderate those and get rid of them if you've got a video that's getting a lot of traffic. Um, CG asks, is it easier to rank uh, a WordPress blog or a regular hosted site as opposed to a Wix or Weebly site? Um, generally, it's going to be easier to rank your own site, but more importantly, Wix and Weebly, you know, they're they're easy platforms to set up a site on. But so is WordPress. But the problem is that you're then completely limited because you can't do any normal hosting things on it. And you can't touch your page with HTML. You can't add schema. You can't do a lot of stuff. So uh, if you haven't yet started, I would definitely get your own hosting account and just set up a WordPress blog, which is super simple to do, and do that. Um, all right, we've got a couple of questions, which I'll go through and try to answer, Brian. But we're running long, so I want to get to giving away money and be all able right. to do that. So let's give some cash away then. So I'll, I'll give, give you guys maybe another like 30 seconds. And what you'll have to do is at the very top of here, you'll see Sharon asked basically what you thought of to, today's call. And then if you leave a comment there, of course, you, you can also like and love it and share and all that if you want to, uh, which we always appreciate. Uh, but if you leave, you know, you, you know, a comment here, we'll pick a, 
random winner um, in a few mo moments here. And we'll give you $100 cash. Um, so I'll g give you maybe another 10 seconds to do so. I'll do 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'll hit refresh just in case. Sometimes it picks up a couple. And blow the commas here. All right, so count the ones outside first. There's a few that left a comment outside. Makes it a little more hard, but I'll, I'll count those. Um, all right. So we yeah, have one, two, three, plus, three plus, 56, so 59. So we'll do one to 59. Get a random number here. And we have 45. All right, so now I have to count 45. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, 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 forty-two, forty-three,